वेलकम टू ईटी ऑटो रिटेल फोरम दिस इज चंचल पाल चौहान द फीचर्स एडिटर विद ईटी ऑटो आई वेलकम यू ऑल फॉर दिस प्रेस्टीजियस इवेंटफुल रिटेल फोरम व्हिच इज द लार्जेस्ट इवेंट्स ऑफ इट्स काइंड इन इंडिया इन टर्म्स ऑफ ब्रिंगिंग ऑल डिफरेंट स्टेक होल्डर्स ऑफ द ऑटोमोटिव इंडस्ट्री स्पेशली द ओएमस द रिटेलर्स द डीलर्स हु आर वेरी क्रिटिकल इन टर्म्स ऑफ जॉइनिंग द लिंक बिटवीन मैन्युफैक्चरर्स एंड कस्टमर्स टुडे वी हैव अ वेरी ऑगस्ट पैनल इन टर्म्स ऑफ वेरी डाइवर्सिफाइड प्लेयर्स फ्रॉम ऑल सेगमेंट्स फ्रॉम फोर व्हीलर्स टू टू व्हीलर्स टू द रिटेल फाइनेंस एज वेल एज डीलर्स आई विल स्टार्ट अवे विद द Tarun Garg who is uh, director sales and market at Hyundai Motor India welcome to ET Auto Retail Forum Tarun ji thank you chanchal thank you very much yeah second in the league is uh, Devashish Handa who is uh, vice president sales and marketing Suzuki Motorcycle India Private Limited welcome to ET Auto Retail Forum uh, Devashish ji thanks thanks chanchal thank you so much thank you Here we have uh, Arvind Kapil, Country Head Retail Lending, HDFC Bank, India's largest uh, financer and the most diversified group in terms of supporting auto industry for the retail needs. Uh, welcome to ET Auto Retail Forum, uh, Mr. Kapil. Thank you so much, Anshul. Pleasure. And uh, last but not least, uh, the most critical element, which as an automotive journalist I always feel, are the dealers. to play a very significant role in terms of combining everything together and the link with customers we have mr mp sham managing director for akshay motors and also a very important critical element of fada thank you so much for joining mr sham i welcome you to et auto retail forum thank you chanchal ji it's my pleasure mm-hmm. today it's a very critical topic in terms of uh, et uh, auto retail forum that uh, understanding the challenges in auto finance ecosystem and future possibilities this is much more critical in in a market like india where majority of passenger vehicles are sold in uh, finance most of the customers prefer to have finance a significant amount of two wheelers are also sold through finance especially the entry level buyers prefer to go for retail financing and majority of commercial vehicles still you can say almost absolute number is through finance So India is a unique market, and uh, over the years, the percentage has not changed, especially for retail financing. Where, well, and I just wanted to ask and start the session with Tarun. Uh, in terms, twenty uh, twenty has been a very different year. In, uh, there were many new learning. April was a unique month where virtually there were zero sales, and there were, uh, after that the market really started. What has been the learning for an OEM because you are a significant player? You are a premium uh, play in the mass market, and the way your high segment, high realization vehicles like Creta and all have done well. How do you see the learnings of pandemic going ahead? Thank you, Chanchal. And yes, 2020 was indeed a a very different year, I would say. And uh, yes, no point in repeating what all happened because we have talked enough. Uh, but I think one very important thing which clearly came out was that. Uh, that we have to be very very flexible we have to be very very adaptable and uh, uh, you know there is no point in making a very very long kind of a plan uh, and let me be very honest with you while this pandemic uh, was happening when april had zero sales and there was all kinds of forecast being floated uh, you know okay this year industry would be this four wheelers will be this two wheelers will be this now just imagine if we had really gone for those numbers what would have been the degrowth of the industry in calendar year 20 would have been you know but you know we did not we chose that we will take it month by month i'm here to uh, about the all oems put together as an industry and frankly speaking the way um, indian customer has shown us proved us all wrong and come back in such uh, large numbers to buy cars i think is amazing and frankly Uh, to see a growth in quarter three and quarter four over last year numbers to over two thousand nineteen numbers was really amazing. That was the first part. The second part was that all this halla was happening that maybe customer will downgrade and you know maybe not buy high end cars. No, that also has been proved wrong. In fact, SUVs have emerged as you now contributing twenty nine percent to the overall market. as against 25 and a half or in calendar year 19 so the suv trend is really really going up as was the case last 4 5 years the so pandemic has really not really kind of uh, affected the customers decision to downgrade at all 
on the contrary i would say because he did not have too many avenues to to spend money because he was not going out he was not having dinners outside he was not traveling maybe he was not attending marriages so no no fancy clothes so all that money probably much of that money came into buying cars of his choice so uh, so one thing is don't take the indian customer for granted don't underestimate his power and of course be adaptable uh, be innovative and i think some of these learnings are here to stay hopefully the pandemic will go all with the, all this vaccination coming around now uh, but the learnings will definitely stay and make us much more agile uh, and uh, and uh, much more uh, i would say uh, prepared to take on any challenges in the future handasan if i can ask you that uh, how do you see the two wheeler segment and especially finance in two wheelers is comparatively lower than four wheelers is there been a change in uh, pandemic and uh, post covid situation yeah it is uh, finance penetration has gone up but it has gone up largely led by the rural surge in two wheelers the even when we talk recovery the recovery has also been more up country led tier 3 tier 4 uh, locations have been contributing to the growth uh, to a much much higher extent than the urban areas that is also reflected in the proportion of scooters for example where we have a significant play coming down as a proportion to the overall industry so while on the urban side we have seen our uh, retail penetration actually fall a little it was about 50% last year and and here i am talking about ourselves suzuki motorcycles so we were about 50% last year it has come down to about 46% but then in our case our play is largely urban we have very limited participation in the up country markets because of the kind of portfolio product portfolio we have but yes um, overall the the industry the finance penetration i am told has gone up and it has gone up largely to do with the commuter side of commuter motorcycles that has uh, which is 50% of the two wheeler market anyway so that has actually fueled it arvin how has been the market especially in the light we have seen much more softer interest rates how do you see the retail business going and what has been the learnings and challenges in the pandemic case yeah i don't know i think uh, like uh, just to add on to what uh, uh, mr honda said and what uh, mr garg said we have noticed that uh, other than the very decent double digit growth on the four wheeler in the last quarter so i see the covid behind us the, if if i look at from a banker's perspective uh, and for a couple of reasons uh, if you look at uh, just the vehicle sales you see a positive double digit growth at least on the four wheeler side if you look at uh, the retail working capital side which is a separate perspective i'm bringing in because 60% of your uh, target audience is self employed that's actually grown by almost 2 3 times almost 40 50% growth so what is essentially happening is that there is a very good sign in the last quarter which is your quarter 3 of the financing going up substantially and this will all trickle down uh, into a positive economic environment as you go along this calendar year i think couple of learnings couple of challenges i think 90% of the customers are talking about they actually coming online but you really don't have an end to end online solutions uh, for the customer to walk off with the car with the financing the way i see it i see most customers are talking about uh, that it's the best interest rate scenario but in the last 5 years for sure you almost almost at the rock bottom rates right now if i take just a 5 if you take the last 12 months it's almost 125 basis point lower in the last one year so for a customer the whole vehicle industry it's a very positive environment uh, to take loans but they i think the whole process uh, has to be far more seamless uh, end to end so that the customer finds it much easier to access it and probably drive off his car with the financing and uh, as far as uh, four wheelers concerned uh, it's a direct proportion to the economy in my limited understanding so it, with the gdp looking up Uh, over the next three year view, if I were to take my limited assessment, is that auto should really look up positively, yeah, and so should two wheelers. Especially our penetration in the world is like barely twenty five per thousand. I think there's a fair upside from here on. Okay, thank you so much.
Mr. Sharm, uh, dealer play such a critical role, and what has been the challenge, especially? Uh, we had a zero April, then uh, gradually and slowly the sales started picking up. So dealers were at the receiving end that you have huge cost and uh, the challenges and the learning you see, especially sales for the month of July and August were gradual and also it was the festive period which brought on some turnaround and change. So how do you see this happening in terms that dealers able to meet the real situation and some benefits to customers? Yeah, uh, I'll break your question up into two parts. One is, uh, you asked me about April zero sales, May, June, and July being slow yeah, yeah. ramped up sales. I should uh, say a big thanks to all OEMs. The OEMs came forward and supported the dealers. Most of the brands supported the dealer carrying costs. Okay, Almost all the OEMs in some way or the other, they came forward and said, hey, listen, we know that you've gone through a lot of pain. Let's uh, make sure that we support you on carrying costs. Second thing is, I think dealers who are financially prudent before the pandemic have emerged stronger. Okay, Their dependence on working capital has reduced because the stock is at an all-time low. So dealer costs have come down a lot. Dealers have renegotiated rents for the next six months to one year up to at least March of 2021. Second thing is a lot of dealerships have not increased wages this year. Thirdly, Unproductive staff has been sent home by dealers. Okay, so their productivity has gone up. And uh, fourthly, because of uh, low carrying costs, the dealer business is definitely uh, very profitable uh, because the dealers are at a 12 to 15 day stock. And almost all dealers in the country have sold out 2020 stock. There's no 2020 stock with almost all the brands, whether it's Maruti, Hyundai, Honda, Ford, or any brand that way. And uh, like Tarunji said, the market has bounced back very, very strongly, whether it's two wheelers, three wheelers, or even four wheelers. Okay, thank you. Tarun, a uh, very critical uh, subject remains the working uh, cost capital, the working capital requirement of dealers. And uh, stocks have been low because retail sales were good. But how do you see the challenge in terms of dealer distress happening? There were a couple of issues. Did finance play a critical role in terms of helping the dealers and customers in terms of addressing the grievances? Of course, and uh, in fact, uh, frankly, dealer distress was happening primarily on two counts. One was, uh, I mean, uh, with all due respect, some of their own doing where probably, you know, the funds were diverted to some other uh, businesses and, uh, you know, and the second was, of course, uh, because of the high stocks, because of the suddenly the slow market happened probably to the second half of 2018. Uh, so now let's see the problem here. The issue is now that the stocks, like Mr. Sham said, the stocks have come down. Manufacturers have become much more disciplined. And let me tell you, and I hope that all of us make sure that the learnings of these last eight months, we don't forget very soon. So one, uh, and this, this applies to OEMs, this applies to dealers, this applies to financers as well. Because when all this 16, 17, 18 growth was happening, I think somewhere, you know, uh, we close our eyes and allow things to drift. And that is where, you know, all this, all this problem happened. But now I believe we are looking at a 21, which is economically looking much better. Uh, we, like I said, dealers know that, you know, uh, that they have to be disciplined. Finances have become very strict. Now there's a clear cut uh, assessment of the gaps. They're looking at collaterals more closely. So uh, some of those things, I think, are very good for the long-term sustainability of the business. The OEMs are also very, very clear that, uh, you know, the stocking levels have to be within a particular limit. And uh, and dealers also know that rather than going for incessant expansion, you know, which happened probably ki any new OEM is coming, you know, oh, I want this. I want this like a new toy in my kitty. So I think uh, uh, this is a learning for all of us. And, uh, and I think we have emerged quite strong because if I look at Hyundai and uh, I can clearly see that the stress is, is almost negligible now. Uh, the, the, and, and of course, Arvind is sitting here, so uh, he, can, he, can, uh, he can agree to that. And uh, also, like I said, OEMs have developed their own systems to see of, uh, you know, that, uh, that uh, how much is the fund taken from a financer, what is the stock level, so that we can really work very closely with the financers, dealers, and the entire ecosystem is strong and robust to go forward. Lastly, from a customer perspective, 
Of course, like Arvind said, the interest rate are at the lowest, and uh, 75, 80 percent of of uh, car buying still happens through finance. So I think that's a very key factor, which is really helping the market to probably come back stronger than the two wheelers, where probably the financing is still to the level of maybe 50 percent. Uh, you know, so this is what uh, my take on uh, this whole thing is. Arvind, uh, what has been the situation of delinquencies and? Uh... Uh, from the customer front and uh, has there been any dealer distress especially in the pandemic times and if these issues how you have been dealing as country's largest financer no i think chanchal it was a very interesting experience for us as well uh, you know when this whole uh, covid started and i was in touch with uh, tarun and a lot of manufacturers and our level of preparation was like a war like situation because you know everybody was trying to see into the future we didn't know what the real impact. We've now seen the world really sitting at home and operating uh, scenario over the last 100 years, right? So our level of preparedness at HGMC Bank was like a war uh, zone. So we had uh, all possible scenarios carved out. Uh, but I think uh, to be fair to the customer and the fair to the maturity of the OEMs, I think all of us work together. Luckily, I didn't see uh, too much stress. I can say that now sitting here, when I look back, I think it is very, very customers have also... If you've been a prudent financial lender, both to the dealer community and if you uh, even to the customers, I think, and if uh, it's a sensible lending done on either case, I, I think then everybody seems to have managed it. So I think uh, it's it's I can fairly say that today, of course, the working capital limits have shortened. Uh, you have a much higher demand. The supply side has got a little right now. I think the global supply chain, I guess, is also right now settling down with all this uh, COVID scenario. So, but of course, I see a tremendous uh, awakening, uh, a tremendous prudence among OEMs to understand that as bankers, we would love to fund any amount as long as it's for the vehicle. So I think the dealer community at large, the prudent ones, like Sham said, they've been very sensible. They've kept it that way. And automatically, the working capital stays prudent to the way uh, the demand of the country is. So if you don't divert your funds, you keep your books clean then I think these kind of cycles, you can really rebound with great strengths. So I think we've seen uh, the delinquency trends for the bank has been uh, nothing alarming at all. And uh, we just had an earning call two days back where our risk head also said the same thing, that we are now on a very, very, very comfortable back to the pre-COVID uh, levels. So I think uh, the industry, by and large, uh, the banks are completely flush with liquidity right now, thanks to the kind of foreign funds that the country is receiving. So it's a very good time from a financing point of view as an ecosystem, sir. Uh, Devashish, uh, the profile of two-wheeler customers is very different from other segments, especially in pandemic times when uh, the liquidity was running low, especially for the initial months and there were tougher times in urban markets. The job scenario was very weak and the business was not doing too well. What were the challenges you see and how were you able to overcome those, especially the profile of the two-wheeler customers? As you go from urban to rural, it shifts significantly. Uh, it is not too different when you look at the urban market. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, finance penetration, if you see in urban areas, I mean, Arvind would know it better, would be around in the tune of around 40%. It is in the rural areas where with the rural markets which pull it up. So if it is 50% on an average, right, or thereabout, it is pulled up because of the rural volumes and it is pulled down because of the urban volumes. It is pulled down in the urban side were two factors to my understanding, limited understanding I have. One is the ticket size and it is not necessarily uh, for all buyers, especially uh, beyond a certain category of income levels. It is not a primary mode of uh, transport for livelihood reasons, right? So it is a second vehicle. Plus, if you juxtapose the IRR to that, the kind of rates at which two wheelers are lending are, are lent, then um, a typical urban buyer also has personal loans options. Why would he go for a lien and things like that on the asset? So they, it's not so straight. So there are multiple factors which, uh, uh, to my mind, impact this kind of a situation. Having said that, on the recovery front, like it was mentioned earlier, 
Mr. Garg mentioned that uh, four-wheeler demand recovery was more higher than two-wheelers. Yes, and I believe it's a little natural as well. A lot of it, to my mind, comes from uh, people staying away from public transport. Right? Uh, we all know that. Uh, we are also staying away from public transport. Now, four-wheelers, uh, long-haul public transport, long-haul uh, travel, as it is, is extremely subdued. I mean, we all know how travel industry has been impacted. And there has been a shift in the personal mobility of people also. Instead of going long-haul vacations, people are going short-haul vacation. And that is where short-haul in intercity movement can be taken away by cars. That cannot be taken away by two-wheelers. Two-wheelers, to some extent, can take away the intra-city kind of slowdown in public uh, transport or people taking to public transport. So to my understanding, that is, these are uh, main reasons why the level of recovery is a little lower in uh, two-wheelers than in four-wheelers. Sean, I uh, wanted to understand from the dealer's perspective in terms, what were the, the working capital needs? And I'm not talking about the prudent dealers, those who have uh, more clearer fundamental and stronger financials. How do you see dealers uh, uh, managing their working capital needs and what impact did the soft uh, interest rates had on the automotive business? What I would say is a uh, couple of things I would like to say. Like Tarunji said and uh, Arvindji said also, there are a couple of dealers who have diverted money. Okay, So what has happened is they are trying to bring back the money into the system and uh, the government came up with the credit guarantee scheme. So banks, I think, have given about 40,000 crores to the MSME segment. Okay, So yeah. there was a mismatch between short-term and long-term capital. So those loans should help dealers to figure their business properly. Second thing is, like uh, Tarunji said, Devashish uh, ji said, the stock at dealer's level is 12 to 15 days. So working capital requirement has come down by 60% to dealerships. So that means lower interest costs and uh, better profitability to dealerships. So dealers who have managed their finances prudently would stand to gain a lot. And I also feel consolidation will take place. A lot of weaker dealers would go out of the business and stronger dealers will remain in the business. Have okay. I answered your question? Yeah, yeah. Arvind, we want to understand that April was a zero month and uh, then May, uh, almost half the month was lost. The two, two and a half months. Arvind, how are the finance companies dealing in such a situation? And uh, how are you geared in terms that uh, the practices in the auto retail finance change because of that? No, I think, uh, Janshal, the smarter ones have been working on uh, putting an infrastructure to kind of grapple with dust situations ever again. So I think uh, there was a lockdown situation for almost 90 days. And uh, as far as auto financing is concerned, it had come to a standstill. But the larger point was that I think we did a hell of a lot of work at that time. And we are on the verge of probably we put in a proposal to the regulator for a complete end-to-end -end digital option, both for four-wheelers and two-wheelers, virtually seamless. Like you can disperse a loan without meeting anybody. And to a substantial percentage of the cases, because both have become relevant, because it's not just a play of digital here, it's also a play of your ability for risk assessment uh, uh, digitally. So it's, a, it's not just about uh, a fintech substitution. And uh, being a responsible bank, we also have those kind of uh, criteria we got to meet before we launch something. So I think there's a whole lot of work, Chanchal, that we did at that time. And uh, we're doing a lot of catch up uh, once things are coming back to normal. And uh, I'm even optimistic this quarter. I guess we have some supply side uh, constraints which are putting in, but we are gearing up uh, and uh, kind of uh, these digital also opens up uh, optimization of the businesses that we do on the vehicle side because a lot of our sales team seamlessly can start participating in financing, which today probably gets done only by a specialized team with services a dealer. So I think we could be in a position to add value in expanding the boundaries, expanding the market uh, from our point of view and the kind of business that we do and we contribute to the OEMs and the market at large. So we've been on that, sir. Tarun, much has been said about uh, digital and uh, 
the physical experience of automotive in today's time the the, the overall average realizations are going up because the price points have changed in the auto market suvs are gaining preference over compacts and hatchbacks how do you see the scenario changing in terms of customers profile coming over for finance and i also heard in certain markets for a brief period the cash component in terms of buying had gone up people were trying to avoid uh, the emi burden how do you see the customer profile changing especially in the light that uh, the price proposition has changed a lot yeah so like i said look there are some things which will which will just go away once the pandemic goes like you mentioned about that cash component thing i don't think it's a long term a long term phenomena that time of course you know everybody was trying to just uh, do away with their debts probably okay what's going to happen you are so uncertain about the future and of course you don't have anywhere to spend so probably it's a natural thing you okay let me let me buy on cash maybe i mean if if that happened if if what you're saying is right but my point is if you see from a ticket from a long term perspective i don't see that as a that as a threat or that as a trend emerging i think uh, financing here is to stay and like devashish mentioned and i agree with him the overall finance penetration is only going up if, if we see the 10 year trend or if we see a 5 year trend or even if we see a calendar year 20 trend that is the first part of it the second part of it like i said i think uh, customers are now more and more wanting these new features and new technologies and where you know financing really makes it very very easy because suppose i have to pay by cash 100000 rupees you know to to go for a higher trim i think the moment you uh, you split it into 5 years suddenly in terms of an emi it becomes a much easier option so i think this point will become more and more relevant as we go along because customers mind you are becoming also much more evolved because what this digital thing has done is that now they are much more aware of the latest what is happening in in the world they have become much more conscious about the environment they have become much more conscious about the features they have con- they have become much more conscious about the safety so many aspects so they don't mind really spending that much and where i think arvin plays a very cr- critical role in really helping customers Uh, you know realizing this dream of really you know moving up the ladder so uh, i don't see a major change in the customer behavior yes digital inquiries in 2019 used to be about 10% in 2020 they are already 30% so that's a very natural trend uh, at the same time uh, arvin mentioned about a end to end solution yes hyundai does have a click to buy where a financing can also happen digitally where everything can happen digitally including the including the delivery of the car which can be done at the office but the customer says i want a delivery still at home because car buying is still a very very emotional a very very family kind of a decision for every customer so i think some of those things probably at least in india would still remain uh, but yes largely uh, uh, i think the trend towards digital is there is there uh, for everybody to ponder and to do because it has just accelerated i think last 3 years we were actually anyway moving towards digital but now that acceleration has happened and it is there to stay is what we feel arvin what digital impact had uh, in terms of retail financing yeah, no doubt it must have accelerated but what changes in your processes in your practices in your uh, operations it brought uh, digital and uh, the covid impact so yeah i think the one important uh, assumption uh, that uh, we understand is that 90% of today's customers go online at least once for their car buying experience now what really happens after that is that they uh, like tarun said there are various other behavioral aspects so finally lands up at the dealership and i think that's going to continue for a couple of years the whole idea is on the digital side to create an option for a customer that if he happens to be a millennial or he's a little more comfortable on that part of the world and he wants to fulfill his journey from there then can he select his car can he go to financing and actually the infrastructure presently as we talk is more for an approval digital approvals but if you really get down to dispersion there's not more than a single digit that can really be done seamlessly so i think as a bank uh, what we've done is we've kept our systems uh, we've designed our systems over the last couple of months and as uh, as a bank we can't just go and launch so we've sent it to the regulator for an approval right now but it uh, the whole idea is to create an ecosystem uh, partnering with oems to give an option to the customer to uh, actually go with this financing right not just from the lead to be passed on from the dealer to the bank to process it faster paperless 
but the whole idea is to seamlessly get his approval done see, without a documentation collection without a signature and the idea is that can we also disperse it to the dealer of his choice in a democratic where we we will probably be the financing facilitator and that's the way we see the whole ecosystem so it will obviously go live subject to the regulators by it but that's the whole line of thinking chachil ji that the way we see the world moving devashish uh, for two wheeler especially uh, your scooters is a premium play and it's slightly in the higher segment how do you see the customer profile there is no financing that is happening because people's uh, purchasing power was a bit uh, low and there was a setback in terms of the capacity to purchase how has the market been for two wheeler segment uh, as i said earlier uh, finance penetration has gone up in two wheelers okay. overall for yeah. sure as we are coming out now post pandemic and the way arvin was saying i can talk for ourselves at suzuki we were the first to kind of integrate the way he was mentioning what they are planning hdfc happened to be one of the banks we have already integrated two of our uh, lead financiers on our uh, digital platform on our program of uh, digital sale we have already integrated uh, two financiers so where a customer can go on our website on the suzuki motorcycle website choose his product choose his dealer of choice choose his financier of choice also from the options available and it has just about started about a month or two back we have just started so i won't be in a position to say that uh, taken off not taken off it is very early for me to make that uh, comment but yes it is uh, something which we feel would gain traction going forward with the, and especially with the kind of customer profile we cater to right which is much more youthful uh, mr sham if i uh, for the dealers in terms that Uh, how do you see 2021 going ahead i'm not asking about the prudent dealers they are all kind of dealers in the section uh, i know uh, many dealers across india who are having a tough time business has been very brand centric company specific segment specific i don't want to go into details but we need an understanding what the challenges people have faced the dealer community how you have been able to uh, keep the business through for the entire 2020 and 2021 what challenges are forthcoming i think uh... 2021 uh, like you rightly said chanchal ji in your opening remarks 2020 uh, is not a it was a tough year okay 2021 would be definitely a much more robust year for the automobile industry because every segment of the industry whether it's two wheelers three wheelers four wheelers or uh, commercial equipment or mnhcv business has been growing okay and uh, so dealers definitely are going to uh, you know benefit out of this added to this oems uh, and dealers have understood that stocking norms have changed you know like i'm sure going forward like tarun ji said stocking would be much more regulated and the oe the financials also have become tough on uh, with dealers who have not been who have diverted capital so uh, there will be more discipline in the business and uh, dealer business should be much more profitable productivity should go up and 2021 should be a good year for dealerships at large across the segments i see a lot of positivity okay okay tarun uh, what are the measures coming from oems in terms of uh, seeing the profile of customers the civil score is seen by the finance companies i know but in terms of dealer business in terms of finance business because these were tough times and what kind of uh, help that was rendered by oems to dealers in terms of uh, credit finance and other things how do you see 2021 panning out how do you see this year changing the automotive business uh, for the retail format yeah so there are a couple of things here i think one like i said uh, we have to really provide the customer with this uh, you know online end to end buying uh, uh, you know experience very importantly we have all realized that probably you know i don't know whether uh, you will agree with me but probably one customer you know he meets maybe 15 people at the dealership from the time he inquires from the time he takes a takes a delivery of the car is it really required of course this pandemic uh, we all realized because we were really hesitating to meet people that uh, you know some of it became from force you know that okay even if customer is going let it be only limited to maybe couple of people so uh, my point is that 
this click to buy i talked about i think will be a very very crucial transition from this customer who is still probably, you know today uh, used to buying in a particular way but wants to wants to really change change this buying behavior so that is one aspect and we at hyundai have also made a few changes uh, you know uh, from a 1.0 version click to buy to a now a much more modern version where uh, on on road delivery prices are also available because earlier it was all about ex showroom and customer had to really run from pillar to post to get a on road price as simple as that you know then financing like arvin said i think everything can be done online of course we are ready to take accept any payments uh, you know online so i think all that business uh, will become much more robust also custom it will become much more transparent also because please see that otherwise we are really depending on so the sales consultants while we will continue to train them but there will always be a gap in the in you know how mr a behaves versus mr b and versus mr c but the moment you are making it much more uh, you know online then you are also standardizing that experience so i think that will also be very very beneficial on the dealer front like i mentioned of course during the pandemic we made uh, uh, a lot of changes uh, in, in the entire way that this uh, you know this system was working uh, i think dealers have also realized because i think automobile industry many oems many dealers still used to that month end kind of a concept in 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 lifting vehicles month end kind of a concept i think many of us have done away with that concept and rather really you know the month starts from day 1 and ends at day 31 rather than a month starting on maybe 21st or 22nd of the month and we are trying to make up i think that was also a very big re- reason for so many of us getting into problems so a uh, lot of uh, uh, good things have happened which will which will i think hold us in good stead going forward plus of course the underlying factor is as long as new models continue to get launched as long as uh, there is a customer demand pull i think uh, we are all in the good space the problem comes when there is a unusual skew towards either a demand or to a supply as long as we are able to manage this gap between demand and supply i think all of us are in a very very comfortable space arvind uh, in the past we have seen dealer stress in de- uh, various ways different forms and uh, finances have come to the rescue last year was really tough in terms the business went but uh, festive period came for the rescue and things really moved. but still a uh, couple of businesses are under stress in terms of the viability dealerships uh, the size is getting smaller new formats are emerging the digitalization is taking over in terms of physical presence uh, the number of outlets uh, it might not be getting reduced but at least they are getting consolidated as a financer how do you see the business going in 21 what has been the impact i think uh, as banks uh... we we feel the need to work more closely uh, not only with the dealers but with the oems uh, to make sure that uh, we educate almost 100% of the dealers on financial prudence because there is no substitute to that it's going to be an on loan online uh, ongoing dynamic uh, scenario it's not like dealers aren't aware of it but it will be a constant endeavor for businessmen to get up the scale in the ladder of evolution so i think in uh, these times also we saw that uh, i think there are couple of uh, so we've ca- categorized them into different categories where we've constantly discussed with them and it's a dynamic state where if somebody needs help uh, as banks and we have been dealing with them we've been in this business for last 20 years so we have a fair amount of depth of experience uh, not to kind of feel panicked about it and uh, so we have a ways around talking to the oems talking to the dealers and sorting it out but i can assure you that most dealers uh, on a discussion level do come out of these issues uh, pre 60 to 90 days and i think some of them uh, very if there's a gross uh, violation of fund diversion then i think it is might take a little longer but i would advise uh, the ecosystem is changing and i think i must make a mention of this on this panel uh, coming from the banking fraternity the regulators are getting far more stricter with the banks and which i think dealers must take note of uh, and this is happening at a uh, industry level where they are saying that we don't mind funding for cars and for uh, uh, for the vehicles if two wheelers but uh, they are very very uh, getting far more stricter and uh, from a financial prudence point of view and saying that the dealers uh, who probably are diverting funds it should be just on best effort basis and we got to probably uh, move them into certain category and start reporting to the regulator 
so these are the things which are probably india is going through a certain amount of quality transitions in the way we do regulation uh, of the financing in the financing world probably works very closely with the manufacturing world so i think dealers must take a little more serious note of these things because this is going to be not single one or two banks this is going to be the bank wide phenomena where if uh, so far it was on best practices and good offices we were discussing but very soon you'll find that this is going to any diversion of funds which is visible will start getting reported to the regulator which won't be very good for uh, the individual dealer's financial health he'll get into a wrong cycle of working capital which is not good for the business at large tom uh, can i ask you the very critical question that the couple of companies have withdrawn from india and kapil has raised a very critical point in terms of regulators trying to be very strict on compliance uh there have been issues uh, constantly in terms of dealers having issues with uh, the financial part and uh, diversifying has been a it's more of a practice that has happened in certain uh, cross regions and brands what are the challenges in today's time where the dealer community need to really address those issues and come stronger see the first point uh, like all my uh, fellow panelists have said is financial prudence dealers who don't have financial prudence are definitely going to get into trouble you know they putting a lot of expenses into the dealerships dealerships cannot take those kind of expenses because it's a high volume low margin business okay so that is one point that second point is diverting short term capital to long term assets this has been the practice of many dealerships okay so that needs to be stopped you know if a dealer wants to invest into workshops or a new showroom or into a new business he needs to take a separate line or separate loan from a bank and adequately capitalize his balance sheet making sure he doesn't put the bank or the existing oem or put himself into trouble okay these are two very important things that dealers need to learn third is they need to make sure that stock rotation they need to make sure that uh, you know the basic fundamentals of business no stock with them should be there more than 60 days why i am saying 60 days is the banking products are the inventory funding products are between 75 to 90 days like arvin said he will, they will have to start reporting to the regulator if some stock is there and he doesn't pay back you know so dealers also have to get into the practice of win wise reporting you know if, have i sold it have not sold it today what is happening is win wise reporting is not happening few bankers are doing it and a few bankers are not doing it so dealers need to look at it win wise and make sure that the stock lying with them gets rotated or it gets moved out okay so what i'm trying to say is if a dealer wants to be in this business he has to you know adequately capitalize his balance sheet make sure that this short term money is not used for long term assets he has separate lines and if he's starting a new business he should not be diverting the money from his existing business into the new business he should bring in separate working capital he should bring in separate uh, capital and adequately capitalize it and move on devishish uh, as a fringe player i'm sorry uh, but uh, you have a limited presence across the market what are the challenges you foresee in this year that players like you who have been targeting to look at 1 billion sales coming from india what are the shortcomings that you need to really overcome in this year and how finance will take a bigger step in terms of leapfrogging to a million sales that suzuki has been targeting and two wheeler segment to really come over the blip in the past one month we have seen slight uh, I, i would say a distress but the retail sales have not been very positive so how finance will play a bigger uh, uh, role and play in uh, 2021 for the two wheeler segment yes as a much smaller player i'll talk one specifically for the sales and then to uh, you know in terms of the industry at large uh, for us the biggest challenge this year has fortunately not been on the demand side and it has not been on the market side customer side our concerns have more been on the supply side because we are small so when you are small uh, the supply chain knows where the volumes lie right so if you are small you are impacted a little harder than the bigger players right so when if you see who has led the recovery whether it is four wheelers or whether it is two wheelers it will always be the 
bigger player who would lead the recovery typically in a you know recovery out of a pandemic where people are not working they are constrained to stay inside etc and you know industrial units are not working and they are restarting in a way it's very natural so we understand that we have taken it in our stride and we are building it up now so our inability to sell to the extent we would want is more to do with our not being able to supply to sham <laughs> right okay. so let me put it that way industry at large yes on the like the fiscal prudence part that was said i fundamentally believe that diverting working capital to capex needs has been the single biggest concern area in our industry which has led to most pitfalls that we have experienced for us uh, fortunately uh, we have not seen too much of a network attrition on that count and that has uh, that is also borne by the kind of trend suzuki motorcycles has had even in 1920 when the industry was down not because of covid but because of economic slowdown we were down by about two wheelers were down by about 18% we were the only brand to be up positive so we don't have a front facing problem uh, so to speak but industry at large yes uh, the single biggest factor that comes to my mind in the submission i like to make to arvind and uh, his fraternity would be if you could look at while you tighten working capital you tighten the the credit grid and the risk profile of the hirer on the retail uh, finance side we should definitely relook at the terms of lending rate for two wheelers it is uh, at a great variance to other products whether it is commercial vehicles whether it is uh, passenger vehicles passenger personal vehicle that is one major deterrent uh, especially when the same lender it is the same bank who has another business vertical where the same buyer has an option of buying at a lower cost and acquiring the asset and without a lien right so that is something that is for the banking industry to look into but as an oem as a seller that is uh, something that we feel is uh, if addressed can definitely uh, lead to some traction tarun uh, auto industry has seen two challenging years 19 we saw a dip and decline and 20 was unexpected so going forward as a large player we have seen uh, recovery happening in the past few months and especially uh, suv has totally changed the dynamics of the market in terms of the realization going up for oem as well as customers willing to pay a higher price for vehicles how do you see uh, 2021 panning out it will be a year of uh, resurgence and what uh, expectation you have from the financiers in terms of making india or the automotive industry coming back to something uh, closer to what were the estimates are we are not saying to we are looking at a 5 million kind of passenger vehicle but at least when we reach the earlier target of 3.4 million cars sold in india how do you see the finance uh, playing a critical role and will 2021 be a year of resurgence i wish yes i wish i had that uh, the ability to look into the future and make a prediction like that uh look uh, there are a couple of things here one is the when we talk about 21 growth percentage has no meaning because uh, 2020 with all this resurgence and all this double digit growth still the result is that calendar year 20 was still minus 17% lower than calendar year 19 which was minus 12 and a half uh, you know over calendar year 18 so we are i think still a long long way from where we were in calendar year 18 you know like you mentioned so uh, that is the first part so percentage growth does not mean much in calendar 21 number 2 while we are very happy with the last 5 6 months of growth uh, and january has opened to a reasonably good level and like what sham said that uh, stocks are low all those are positive the vaccination has started uh, the gdp projection is better at the same time we have to understand that the overall growth of the economy uh, will will drive the car sales you know because if you see over the last 20 years 25 years i think car sales growth is directly proportional to the to the per capita gdp in fact it's a very very strong correlation so unless the other sectors of the economy like travel 
like uh, textiles like uh, you know so many other factors which which are like down in the dumps whether it is the airlines whether it is the hotels uh, that uh, they start coming back unless the positive sentiment happens you know which means that i can really when i step out of the house i don't have to look at a uh, you know that fear of contacting the virus because uh, what we hear is that yes vaccination will happen but still that mask free kind of a thing is still uh, you know many months away if not years so which means that the sentiment is still not going to be extremely good in terms of uh, a freedom you know okay now i'm free to take any decision now i am very happy and very strong uh, i feel about the future so i think we have to still wait before reaching those conclusions at the same time like everybody my co panelist said i think we are quite optimistic uh, about january about this quarter going forward and if positive offshoot start appearing in the economy uh, in fact arvin mentioned that the banks are also feeling much more comfortable with the breathing space which means credit probably will flow much more in the into the system which means that entrepreneurs and one very important thing i think which is very important i think chanchal and this i believe i hope that everybody agrees with me what this what has happened in this pandemic is irrespective of auto or dealer or oem while everybody has managed to reduce their cost the revenues have come back to the to the pre covid levels so please understand what is happening the the revenue is same the cost has come down so the profit levels you will see you are seeing some uh, some very strong profit levels that is one number two which is not so good is the gap between haves and have nots has also increased unfortunately so we have always been talking about this inclusive growth and this inclusive india unfortunately any such event any such adverse event it increases the gap between you know people who have and people who don't have so i think that aspect also has to be seen because the government priority is government spending probably would be to to bridge this gap uh, so there are a lot of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, still some doubts about what the long term sustainability but yes i think we are we can safely say that we can really look forward to a much more optimistic uh, uh, you know economic scenario much more optimistic in terms of uh you know uh, four wheelers and two wheelers as well really contributing to the growth of the economy um, moving forward so to that extent i think all of us probably will be on the same plane that 21 probably will be uh, you know a, a very important year in terms of taking forward the learnings of covid and also because of the entrepreneur spirit of india reaching back to those pre covid level in terms of your top lines which means we can be much stronger fundamentally arvin the automotive industry has seen decline for the past two successive years uh, we we may say that the growth uh, tarun is absolutely right that the growth figures might not be a real indicator but in actual terms the uh, unit size and all the industry has shrunk for the past two years how do you see 21 uh, the challenges for credit companies financiers and bfcs going ahead how they can propel or help the industry to expand and come back to the previous levels so yeah, i think three parts to it one is the economy as such if you look at we've got the best rainfall uh, in the last two years west water levels you're talking about a serious uh, a country with around 60% of the people living in that area so agriculture has seen a good uptake you've seen tier 2 tier 3 cities which are seeing a massive growth uh, the way we see it right now if you see the green shoots or the gst collections even if you look at Uh, there's stronger and more widespread green shoots which are all over the place i mentioned about the digital aspect uh, you have 6 lakh villages in this country and i think uh, we really juice out the 1 lakh odd uh, villages uh, because if financing is the main aspect most banks effectively cover out 1 lakh odd villages so i think you will uh, we will have to use technology to reach out uh, as key enablers along with the oems for these 6 lakh villages to be covered and really juice out the strength of this country so i think there is opportunity the point i'm making is there's opportunity of waiting for the economy to recover there's an opportunity of the penetration in itself so uh, if you add a plus b and if i'm very optimistic on the gdp of this country with 3 to 5 years it should be solid up one way and i think auto will be solid up one way because it's a multiple of gdp all over the world and our penetration levels of the country are not too high so it should be one of the best 3 years from here on is my limited assessment and i'm not an economist so that's uh, so i run couple of businesses so i'm giving you my ground level feel yeah 
Uh, Devashish, for two wheelers, uh, the re high rate of interest has always been a concern. But what pandemic has created, at least in on the interest part, uh, there has been a significant uh, uh, reduction, decline. Do you see 2021 where softer interest uh, rates will help the two wheeler industry to propel and grow? Yes, uh, it should. It should definitely uh, help the two wheeler industry gain some momentum. Having said that, uh, I uh, also feel very strongly what uh, this pandemic has taught us. One single uh, biggest takeaway has been um, that relaxing lending norms, and, and I'm not necessarily talking about the rates here, but assessing the terms at which money is lent cannot be a sustainable way of increasing demand. So that would normally lead to a very quick down cycle, what we experienced before pandemic in 1920, where a lot of money going out of the system, et cetera, et cetera, happened. Right? So that is my sense. A reduction in rates, yes, it would definitely help. But reduction, reduction in terms is, uh, I don't think, would be a very desirable uh, step to take in after, especially after having experienced what this exp industry has experienced in the last two years. Tom, can I ask you that? Has there been a kind of expedition of faster way of doing business in 2020 and 21 because of uh, uh, digitalization, because of uh, lesser manpower in terms of getting more productivity? And especially uh, finance has been uh, very, liquidity has been there in the market. So for dealers, in terms of what are the learning in 21, how do you see the outlook where we will be able to come closer to the earlier figures in terms of sales or it will lay the foundation for a stronger growth? As far as digital is concerned, our digital inquiries have doubled after the pandemic. Okay. Okay. Dealers have also learned newer ways to sell cars. Okay. They sell you through video calling or through Skype, you know, and uh, financing has gone up for all vehicles after the pandemic. As far as luxury cars are concerned, I would say 80, 85% has now been uh, is funded by banks. And as regular cars are concerned, at least 60. Scooters, three-wheelers, and uh, two-wheelers could be about 40%. The pandemic has taught one thing, that the digital inquiries have gone up. Dealers need to learn how to handle these digital inquiries, okay? They need to have uh, newer learning techniques at dealerships, like they need to have a data analyst to look at and dissect this uh, data, to look at from where is it coming, how is it coming, how can we tackle it better? So once an inquiry comes from the digital side, we are giving him test drives. Finance is also been given uh, online and they're even buying accessories online and if payments are coming in online, and the delivery of vehicles happen either at his house or at the dealership. So there are far few footsteps, but large number of digital inquiries. So that has changed the way business is done. Like Tarunji mentioned, like it is ridiculous for a customer to meet 15 people at the dealership. Whereas when it's digital, it's seamless and it's useful and it's hassle-free for the customer. So that is one thing that dealers have learned as the business is going to become more and more digital. So requ requirement of space will come down. Requirement of manpower also, productive manpower, the back office especially, will come down. This is the first thing. The second thing is, in terms of financing, our, the banks were very cautious till the month of June, July. After that, banks have come back to normalcy. The rates are at the lowest that you can ever think. In the last three decades, if you look at, in between 95 to 2005, rates of financing was 15 to 25%. And in the last, in, uh, between 2005 to 2015, rates were between 15 to 10%. And now, you know, inventory carrying costs have come down as low as 7.25% and cost to the consumer between 7.75 to 8.5%. I just have one request on behalf of FADA to Arvind Ji, that the tier three, tier four markets are growing at a very fast pace. So bankers need to take look, make note of this and help dealers to finance this so the overall business will pick up, whether it's two-wheelers, three-wheelers or four-wheelers. That is my request to Arvind ji. And the fourth one is 80% of the vehicles sold 
in this country are two wheelers and three wheelers. And I would like to use of Devashti ji, where he has said that why is the interest rate so high for a two wheeler or three wheeler when the same customer gets a much more much lesser rate for a four wheeler? So th these are some points that I leave for Arvind ji. So if banks can look at that, that will accelerate the growth of LCVs, three wheelers as well as two wheelers. Uh, this brings me to my last question. Tarun, I have to ask you this. What are the plans for launches in 21? And how do you see the finances helping you out in making real success just like you had with Creta? Yes. So, uh, look, we have launched, what, probably 10 models in the last two years. Yeah. Uh, you know, so the entire lineup is refreshed. So, but at the same time, uh, I think Hyundai always believes that uh, you know, the best way to connect with the customers is to bring in some exciting products and new technologies. So while I cannot divulge the, uh, the future plans, but I can say that, yes, it will be an exciting year uh, for Hyundai, like it has been for the past couple of years. And yes, Arvind ji has to play a critical role uh, because he's the one who is really, uh, you know, bridging that gap between a desire of a customer to buy and him actually realizing that dream to buy. So uh, I think the, the speed at which uh, finances have improved in terms of the turnaround time, you know, the way when we started in May, I know that I had called up Arvind ji, he said, what is happening? And, and, I, I, and I could empathize with him because, you know, there, everybody was so unsure of which customer would, after two months or three months, you know, there was so much of uncertainty, which I see me, their business will continue or it will be shut down forever. So there was so much of uncertainty. But I think uh, all of us as our entire ecosystem have pulled in our all our uh, might as well as our experience together. And here we are probably much more stronger than what we were when we entered the pandemic. And I think this is the beauty of any, any, uh, any uh, you know, such event. Yet yeah, that it brings us to the best of our ability. And uh, I think uh, we're looking at it very positively. And from a dealer perspective also, uh, uh, I think uh, there are a lot of opportunities, Arvind ji. Uh, Shyamji said one, uh, of course, tier, tier three, tier four is only one part of it. But I think with the disciplined dealer network and with the, probably the NPAs in the car retail finance, especially being so low, probably uh, it is it is so very prudent for for us to get that kind of a priority sector lending even without the government really making it mandatory but from a you are a you are a very senior man in sdfc and uh, we would request on behalf of sham ji devashi ji and of course the entire oem fraternity that uh, that you have played a very critical role in to really bring the auto industry to this level and i think the time has come for it to really take off and uh, from a penetration of 25 27 per thousand to to a, a much larger number same with devashish uh, i think you you we are, we are there with you uh, all this all this while some of our partners have hopefully learned all the lessons and together let us uh, seize this opportunity and uh, and take it uh, on the on a very critical part of path of of success and contribute much more to the indian economy because i strongly believe that we could become the the flag bearer of Indian economy really coming back on track much faster than anticipated. Thank you, panelists, for this a healthy discussion. Thank you all for your time. This uh, brings me to the end of the our critical topic of understanding the challenges of auto retail finance and future possibilities. Thank you so much for joining ET Auto Retail Forum. And I wish you great times and hopefully auto industry will come back much stronger in 2021 and be the real torch bearer of uh, turnaround of Indian economy. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chanchalji. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you so much.